Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, if you have not spent time uh, before watching this lecture uh, on these problems which I'm going to, to present you, construction problems, just pause right now, go back to the website unizor.com, go to geometry circles, find that particular lecture. Notes contain all these problems uh, and try to do it yourself first. You really have to spend some time. Uh, if, if it works immediately without any problems, great. Then just you know, watch my le le lecture just to, to make sure that you're right. If you cannot solve the problem, try to spend at least half an hour to an hour uh, before giving it up. So it's very, very important because the, the purpose of the whole course of these lectures and exercises, etc., is to teach you to, to, to think creatively, to, uh, to analytically approach the problem, and to solve problems, basically. Again, the purpose is to solve problems, not to find out what kind of theorems exist and the proportions and the properties, etc., etc. Solving problems is the goal, so try to do it yourself first before you listen to me. Now, without further ado, let me just go through these construction problems and I will present my solutions, not necessarily the best ones, but that's what I came up with. By the way, some of them might be a little bit more difficult. Uh, quite honestly, I have, I have spent some, some time actually solving these problems myself. Uh, some of them were quick, some of them were not. So, it requires thinking and spending time. That's what actually you will achieve by, um, by, by, by doing this thing. The, the creative mind needs exercise, right? So that's what it is about. Okay, find a point on a given line such that a given segment is viewed from this point at a given angle. So, you have a line and you have some kind of a segment. And you have an angle. So you have to find a point from which this segment is viewed at this particular angle. Okay, um, it's actually a very easy task, uh, but to solve it, I think I would like to introduce some general concept first, which will be used in some other problems as well. So the problem is, um, find the locus of all points from which a given segment is viewed at a given angle. Now, if you have a segment, and you have certain angle like this one, and let's say this is a point from which this particular segment is viewed at this angle, and this is also a point from which the same uh, segment is viewed, and this one. Now, you know that all angles inscribed into a circle are um, actually uh, congruent to each other if they are supported by the same arc. So, if I will uh, have one particular point and then I have these three points, this is triangle, so I will circumvent it with uh, with a circle, so it would be something like this. Then all inscribed angles, which are supported by the same arc, which is this one, would have the same measure. So these are congruent angles, because each one of them is measured by half of the central angle, which is supported by the same arc. Now, obviously, this represents a locus of all points, um, which have uh, the property of having this angle congruent to this one. Now, why a point which is not lying on this circle would not have this this angle uh, congruent to this one. Well, let's take this one outside. Now, as you know from one of the lectures, one of the theorems, that this uh, angle actually is measured as half a sum of um, 
this um, central angle which is supported by this arc and by this arc because it cuts two different arcs from the same circle and the theorem is that if the point is outside of a circle then this angle is measured as half the sum of the corresponding central angles which, which are supported by this arc and this arc. So it's definitely greater. Or uh, actually, in this case, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in this case, it's half of the difference, but in, in case it's inside, then it's uh, half of the sum. So it's either the angle will be smaller than half of the central angle supported by this arc in case the point is outside because there is a difference between this arc and this arc. Or it will be greater, because there is a sum of this same arc and, and, and this arc. So basically, the answer to this problem is the locus of all points from which uh, a given segment is viewed at a given angle is a circle. Well, more precisely, part of the circle, an arc of the circle. Um, uh, and all these points have this property. Now, uh, you, you can definitely point out another uh, arc in another circle, which is symmetrical to this one. If it's symmetrical relative to this line, obviously this arc is exactly the same as this arc, and all these angles also will be congruent to this one. So the locus is actually two arcs. Now, how to build these arcs? Well, very simply. Um, take one particular triangle, which, have, which has this particular segment as a, as a, as a base, and uh, an angle at the top um, congruent to this one. For instance, um, a, a right triangle. You can always build the right triangle with this angle at the top and this uh, catheter is equal to a given segment, right? So having these um, elements, the segment and the segment and an angle, you build the triangle and then you can just do a circle around it and you can build a similar, a, a symmetrical triangle actually this way and have another circle. So basically what I would like to say is that the problem of um, constructing a locus of points from which a given segment is viewed at a given angle is solved by this. And I will consider this as given, and I will use this particular construction uh, as, as given. So whenever I'm saying something like, okay, let's construct a locus of points from which this particular segment is viewed at this particular angle, that's exactly the technique which I'm going to use. Now, Back to our problem. Well, our problem now is solved very easily. Because if I would like to find a point on that line from which a given uh, segment is viewed at a, at, a, at a given angle, all I have to do is let's construct a locus of all points from which this particular segment is viewed at this particular angle. Now, this will look like something like this maybe. And if this line has any intersection with one of these two arcs, that's the solution. So in this case, I have two solutions, this and this. Well, again, depending on where the line is and what the angle is and what the segment is, there might be no solutions at all. Might be one solution if the line is tangent to, to, to these things. Um, or, uh, well, for instance, line can be tangent to both of these, so it will be this angle and this angle. So also two solutions. So it all depends on, the, on their mutual uh, uh, correspondence and, and location and sizes, etc. But anyway, this is the way. You construct the locus of all points from which a uh, given uh, segment is viewed at a given angle, and if there are any intersections with this uh, line, these are your answers. 
Now, in the future, I will not actually go into the details about how to construct the locus of points from which a segment is viewed at a certain angle. I'll just use it. Okay, next. Construct a triangle by a side. So you have a side. Let's say AC is given. Uh, uh, opposite angle, which is this one. This is angle ABC. It's also given. And and an altitude falling from uh, falling onto this side from an opposite vertex. And this BD is also given. So that's what's given. The base, the altitude, and the angle at the top. Well, immediately, what should we do? Obviously, build the locus, construct the locus of all points from which this given segment is viewed at this particular angle. Now, that would be something like this and this, right? Now, we have to find a point B on this or this arc with the distance BD actually given. How to do it? Well, from this line, AC, draw a parallel line at the distance equal to BD. Now, wherever this line crosses the circles, you have solutions. So you have, in this case, one solution, uh, another solution, third solution, and fourth solution. So you have four different triangles. All of them have the same altitude, because it's the distance between two parallel lines, the same angle, because these and these uh, points all lie on the locus of points from which the given segment is viewed at a given angle. So that's the solution. What was important here, again, is the, uh, the method of construction is um, to have one locus and then another locus. And then wherever they intersect, that's what we actually need. The first locus was uh, all the points from which a given segment is viewed at a given angle. Another locus is all the points uh, of the vertices of, uh, vertices of the triangles with the given altitude. So, on the intersection of these two, you have all the solutions. And solutions can be, well, numerous actually, right? It can be no solutions, maybe if the altitude is too big, or it can be two solutions on both sides, or it can be four solutions. I don't think there is a three or one solution. Yeah, that's right. It's either no solutions or two solutions if vertices are... Uh, on a per if altitude is equal to the uh, um, distance to the to the farther part of the circle, or not so, yeah, or f zero, two, or four solutions, right? Okay. Uh, given a circle and a sector in it. Bordered by two radiuses and an arc. Construct a tangent on to an arc. Construct a tangent to an arc such that these radiuses, the continuation of these radiuses, cut a segment of a given length. So MN is a given segment, basically, the length of the MN. And the sector is given. And now we have to construct such a tangent, which uh, which have which has this uh, segment M n uh, having a given uh, length. All right. Actually, this problem is exactly the same as the previous one. Why? Because if you will draw radius to this point 
think about the triangle M O N. What do we have uh, in this triangle? What's given basically, or what we can determine? Obviously, the base, which is M N. Obviously, the angle, which is given, that's the sector, which is given, and an altitude, which is the radius, right? You remember that the radius to the point of tangency is perpendicular to uh, the tangent line. So this is an altitude. OK is altitude in the triangle OMN. So basically, the whole problem is to build a triangle, which we have, um, we have this... Uh, uh, base, we have the angle, and we have an altitude from this vertex to the base, which is the same as the previous one. So we build that triangle, and all we need is just position it uh, in this exactly place where, the, where, where our sector is located. So if you build this triangle somewhere else, whatever the triangle is, uh, M, N, uh, O, you just take the O, M, and put it on this radius, and take ON and put it on this radius, and these are two points which you are looking for. So that's easy. That's basically the same as the previous, just formulated a little bit differently, just to confuse us, obviously. Uh, construct a triangle by side, opposite angle, uh, we have a side, uh, AC. You have opposite angle, which is angle ABC. And, and a median falling onto this side from an opposite vertex. Median. OK. Um, seems to be easy as well. So what do we do first? Since we have a segment, AC, and an angle at the top, first what we do, we draw a locus of all points from which this particular segment is viewed at this particular angle. So this is the locus of points, right? That's what we have to do first. Now, we do have this median, BD. Now, where are the different, where are the locus of all points B such that triangle ABC has a median equal to a given length BD. Well, you put a, sir, uh, you, you put a compass in, uh, in, in the middle of AC, and using this radius, you basically draw a, a circle. And wherever this new circle intersects two previous arcs, that's actually the points which, uh, which have both properties. Number one, this angle is given, and number two, the distance from the B to D is exactly uh, the segment which we need. Since D is chosen as a middle of AC, that's the median. So that's basically the construction. Couple of arcs first, using the locus of the points uh, from which a segment is due to a given angle, and then another circle from the middle of the AC with the given radius and all the intersections, wherever the intersections are, it can be one or two or whatever. Uh, probably one cannot be. No, one cannot be. So it's either two or, or four. Yeah, two or four different solutions can be. All right? Next. Given two segments on a plane, by lengths and positions. So we have lengths and position of two segments. Find uh, a point on the plane such that the first segment is visible uh, from this point at one given angle. So you have this angle given, and you have this angle given. So you have these two segments, and you have two angles. So you have to find the point from which this segment is viewed at this angle and this uh, segment is viewed at this angle. Well, again, that's actually the simplest thing of all. Uh, because first you do the locus of all points from which this particular segment is viewed at this particular angle, and you will get something like, something like this. 
and this. And then, based on this angle, you construct uh, uh, the locus of points. This particular segment is viewed at this angle, so it will be something like this, this and this. Now, wherever these four arcs you have, wherever they intersect each other, these are the points which combine both properties. One segment is viewed at one angle, and another segment is viewed at another angle. So that's your construction. By the way, if you have noticed, I'm kind of doing two things together. Uh, first, I'm analyzing the problem, and then I'm constructing. So analyzing, I mean that uh, I know that this point is supposed to belong to two locuses. Now the construction itself is, okay, draw the first locus, draw the second locus, and then choose the intersection point. Okay. And it's always like this. First, you analyze the problem, and then, once you've done that, you propose a solution. Okay, find a point inside the triangle such that all three its sides are visible from this point at equal angles. Okay, now, so we have three different segments combined into a triangle, and what we need is to find a point inside that all three angles are supposed to be the same, congruent to each other. Well, if they are congruent to each other, it means that each one of them is equal to, obviously, 120 degrees, right? Each one of them. Because the whole thing is 360. Now, knowing that, the solution is obvious. You build the locus of points from which this particular segment is viewed at angle of 120 degrees, which is this arc. And then, same thing for this segment, which is this arc. And wherever these arcs intersect each other, that's the point from which this segment is viewed at 120, and this segment is viewed at 120, which remains, actually, this segment also to be equal to 120, because the whole sum is supposed to be 360. Notice that all of these problems which I'm just talking about, they're all based on the same, well, approach. If you have a segment and angle, uh, this segment is supposed to be viewed from some point. First, you build the locus of all points uh, from which this segment is viewed at this angle. That's, from, th that's, that's what I have started the whole lecture with. Next. Construct a triangle by an angle at some vertex and originating from this vertex median, median and altitude. Okay, so you have triangle, you have altitude and median. Okay, so what you have is you have angle ABC, you have an altitude BD, and you have median BE. This is the right angle. And AE is equal to EC, obviously, because uh, BE is a median. So, and you have this angle. Actually, this is the problem which I have spent a little bit more time thinking about. Um, and uh, it's not solved in, like, one shot. Okay, this is the first step which I'm making, and everything is obvious. I have to do certain additional construction before even I start analyzing the problem. Question is, what this construction is supposed to be? How can I help myself? Now, my first thought was, look at the triangle BGE. Now, we know the catheters BG and hypotenuse BE which means we can actually construct it. So, okay, having these two elements, I can construct this triangle somewhere. Okay, fine, that's done. This is B, G, E. Okay, now, I know that A and C are somewhere here, on this line. So I have to find a point C, and on equal distance from E on this side, 
it would be A, such that this angle is equal to the given. And they don't know really how to do it, quite frankly. Now, if instead of this angle, I was given this angle, then I can do it very simply. That's, what, that, that, that's the beginning how I was starting, I ha, uh, how I have started thinking about this problem. It's not this angle which is, you know, kind of makes the whole thing easy. It's this angle. Because if this angle is given, that means that BG, uh, DBC is 90, 90 degree m minus this angle, so I know this angle. So all I do is, after I constructed the triangle BGE, I just draw a line at this angle, and that's it, at 90 degrees minus whatever is given. But this is not given angle, so I can't really do this. But something actually triggered in my mind that uh, I, I have to like shift something from this angle to some other angle. And here's what I have uh, come up with. Let's Oops, sorry. Let's continue my median at the same length here. So B, E, and E, M are uh, congruent segments. Now, think about A, B, C, M. This is parallelogram. Why? Because these are two diagonals which are dividing each other in the middle, in a midpoint. And we know the theorem about this. So this is a parallelogram. Well, if this is parallelogram, then um, what we have is obviously we have this angle equal to this angle. I mean, not equal, sorry, 180 degree minus this angle. So if, if this one is given, then this one is 180 degree minus this one. So we know it. Knowing this angle, we know this angle. Now what do we know? We know BM because it's twice the BE, right? And that's why, using just you know analysis, I can say that point C is supposed to be on the locus of all points from which this segment, BM, is viewed at this particular angle, which I have calculated. So it should be some kind of a circle here on, on which all the different points C are like. And knowing this line, I have intersection between the circle and the line. So now, how can I construct the whole thing now using this analysis. Now, let me wipe it out. Analysis is finished, and let's just go to construction. So first, using BG and BE, I am constructing the right triangle. B, B, E. Now, knowing angle ABC, I am calculating angle mm, B, uh, CM equal to 180 degree minus angle ABC. Now, so I have this angle. Now, BE, I continue getting the point M and using a segment BM and this angle, I'm constructing an arc where all angles um, where all points from which BM is viewed at this particular angle are located. And the intersection between this arc and the continuation of DE gives me the point C. Now, having the point C going to the left from the E by the same distance, <coughs> well, it's supposed to be a little bit differently on my drawing supposed to be a little further, somewhere there. See. So having this distance, I put it on this side, and that's where I get point A. And that's my triangle. 
Now, point C is chosen as intersection between the line where it's supposed to be and a circle from which the extended double, double median is viewed at this particular calculated angle. And that's the end of the construction. So again, I actually did give it a thought. I was thinking about this problem, uh, problem for some time. And uh, it's not like, you know, you know automatically the, the solution. However, I would like actually to point out, the more problems you solve, the more uh, approaches you kind of develop to certain situations. So you know that in a similar situation, you acted this way and it helped you. Now, if we are talking about medians, in many cases, um, solutions are related to extending median to, uh, to the same length and converting a triangle into parallelogram. So if you have a triangle and a median, in many cases you just double the median and have this parallelogram and something might actually come up to, your, uh, to you as, as a solution using elements of this parallelogram. It's, again, it's something which is developed with experience, um, and the more, prob the more problems you solve, the more standard, so to speak, approaches uh, you might develop. OK. Uh, construct a triangle by a side. An angle this side forms with another side. So you have a side. AC, an angle BAC, and, um, and an angle the third side is made, makes with a median dropped from the angle. Okay, so you have a median here. And you have this angle. Uh, A, D, C. So you have these elements. All right. Um, well, obviously, if you have a C and you have an angle, you can start from this. This is your a C, and this is your line where the point B is supposed to be. Now, how how to find point B? Well. Um, uh, Let's just think about it. Now, if I draw a line parallel to AB, this would be the middle point, right? Because since these are uh, congruent segments, these will also be if these are lines are parallel. All right. Uh. Oh, okay, fine. So since I know the line AB, I know the line EG because these angles are the same. BAC and DEC are the same angle. So from the middle of AC, I can construct another line, which is parallel to this. And now, I, again, I'm using the fact that since I have this angle and I have a segment AC, I can always construct an arc where all the different points from which AC is viewed at given angle are located. So here, if I will do this arc, the crossing would be my D. And this would be my point B. So that's the construction. This angle is equal to given because it lies on this arc, where all the uh, points from which AC 
is viewed at this angle uh, is given. And now, since these lines are parallel and these segments are uh, 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 congruent, because I chose mid mid midpoint of AC, that's, that's why these two also will be equal, which means AD would be a median. Okay? Construct a parallelogram by its two diagonals and one angle. So you have a parallelogram. You have two diagonals. And let's say this angle. A, B, C, D. So you have uh, A, C. You have B, D. And angle B, A, D. These three elements. Um, all right, I, 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 this is actually easy, because again, you start from BD as a segment, which is given, and you uh, draw a locus of points from which BD is viewed at this angle. So that would be some kind of an arc, right? Now, diagonals in the parallelogram are intersecting in the middle, which means if you divide AC in half and take the half, uh, take this particular radius from the middle and using this radius you draw a circle wherever it crossing our locus of points from which uh, BG is actually uh, uh, viewed at this particular angle you get the proper angle Right, so this is your angle, and since the AM is equal to half of AC, this is your parallelogram. So again, BG is given, you draw an arc where all the different A's are supposed to be located, and at the same time, since AM is basically half of AC, centering at the midpoint of BGM, you can draw another circle of this radius, and wherever the circles are intersecting, this is the point A. All right, the last one. Construct a triangle by a side, opposite angle, and sum or difference of two other sides. Okay, so you have A, B, C, you have AC, you have opposite angle, and let's say, let's say, start from the sum, AB plus BC. Well, whenever you have a sum, obviously you have to basically continue that thing with BG. So BG is congruent to BC. All right. Um, AC is given, so angle B is given, ABC, which means you can calculate this angle, which is 180 minus ABC, and then considering these two uh, segments are congruent, these angles are congruent. So knowing this angle, you calculate this angle, which is 180 minus this. And then you uh, calculate these, which are actually half of this. Uh, or, or another one, this is exterior angle, and these are two interior, uh, which are supposed to sum up to this one. But since they're equal, each one of them is equal to half of this. So you know this side because this is the sum of AB plus BC. And you know this side, and you know an angle at the top. So you can construct this thing starting from AD, which is equal to the sum. Then having this uh, line at this particular angle, which is 
half of the ABC, half of this angle, and then uh, having AC as, 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 as a radius, just draw a circle, and it will cross in two different places. All right, so each one of them can be point C or C prime, and uh, to have your point B, all you have to do is, uh, this is point D, all you have to do is draw a perpendicular bisector of, B, of CG. Now this is equal to this, so and this is point B. So either A, B, C would be your uh, triangle, because this angle obviously will be twice as big as this one, uh, and the sum of these two will be equal to AD. So everything seems to be fine. Now, uh, this solution would be uh, as good as well. Now, this is sum. Now, what if the difference instead of a sum? Well, basically, it's practically the same thing. So you have a difference. So you have ABC. And now, since it's a difference, instead of going that way and extending AB, we go this way and put the point G here, so that BG is equal to BC. Now, we know AG, right? And we know this angle. Why? Because since we know this angle, ABC, and DBC is uh, isosceles triangle, these triangles are congruent to each other, so basically we know these angles, which is 180 degree uh, minus given angle and uh, divided uh, in half. And that's why we know this angle, which is 180 degree minus this one. And now the situation is exactly the same as in the previous uh, case. You know AG, you know an angle, and you know AC. So you do this. First, this is your AG. Then, at, a, at, at an angle which you have calculated, you draw a line. And then, using AC uh, as a radius, you draw a circle, and that's your point C. Now, to get to the B, uh, you draw this, and... Uh, you draw a perpendicular bisector to CD, since it's an isosceles triangle, right? D, B, C, and that's where your point B is. Okay, that's it. Um, construction problems are very interesting, and primarily because you have to really think about what additional uh, drawing I have to do, I have to do to make my my life easier. So it's very important that you. But let me repeat myself, solve these problems yourself. Now, even if you could not solve it yourself, and you just listen to me, after you have finished, go back to the website, unizor.com, go back to this lecture, to the notes of this lecture, which contains all these problems, and try to solve them yourself again, uh, just to, to remember the technique, so next time it will be easier. And uh, parents and supervisors and teachers, please uh, use the unizor.com to control educational process of your students because you can enroll students, uh, they can go through exams, and you can examine basically their scores, and you can mark a particular course as completed or not completed, ask them to repeat it until the score will be perfect. Thank you very much. That's it for today.